Hello everyone, thanks for tuning into the video. Just a reminder that we're doing a fundraiser for Animal Sanctuaries by selling uh, Joey Carbstrong apparel. 100% of the profits will be donated to animals. So if you'd like to get your Joey Carbstrong uh, t-shirt or hoodie, please follow the link to the Shopify store down below. Enjoy the video. Okay, Muffin, we're going to do an interview today, okay? We're going to call people out who aren't vegan who love dogs. So this is my mate Andy and this is handsome boy Muffin. And we're going to talk to people who aren't vegan but love dogs. We're going to expose some hip hypocrisy today. Let's see who sits down for a chat. Hey, Muff? Yeah. Do you consent to being filmed? Yeah. Okay, cool. Am I might regret it in like two weeks or so, but I okay. consent. Yeah. I'm Joey. Uh, Martin, nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. So the sign says, uh, if you if you're a dog lover and you're not vegan, you're a hypocrite, basically. Yep. Do, you, do you agree with that? Uh, I don't agree with it. Okay. So let me tell you my position on it, so it's a little bit clearer. I'm saying that if you love dogs, it's for specific reasons. You, they feel pain, they suffer. You wouldn't want a dog being hurt. Uh, you see different personalities in dogs. They react. They have different. Um, wants and desires and this dog over here with the, the tennis ball is happy now, panting. Okay, for those same reasons, we should extend that to the animals that are tortured and killed for your consumption. But if you don't, I'm saying that you're a moral hypocrite because you're excluding all these animals that, that inherently are the same as dogs but only look different and we've chosen them as food animals, but we throw them in slaughterhouses and chop them up when we say that we're basically an animal lover or a dog specific lover. Yeah, that is, that is a very good point, and I do agree with that. You, okay, you are right. You have like, it is kind of um wrong to do that, but I feel like, I feel like we should um morally like reduce meat consumption. But I feel like, because in my opinion, everyone in the future, will, like in the future, everyone will be studying less and less meat. In my okay. opinion, just yeah. I think that's going to happen automatically, okay. just because of the growing population. Okay. You know, it's much more efficient to grow vegetables and fruit than it is meat, so. Yeah, of course it is. Yeah, and I believe that that should be done. Yeah, Because, okay. especially, um, I'm not sure about Australia, but I know America produces more wheat than it needs. So oh, that's something we should aim more. to, yeah, we should yeah. aim for that. Like, though most of our land is kind of like non-farmable, but. Mo most of our farmable land is used to feed livestock with grain and soy and all those things, yeah? I think we have yeah. like, yeah. yeah, so I think we should um, reduce your your position is your position is reduced basically. Is that what yeah. you're saying? But I okay. think like the thing is um, I think we're all automatically studying less meat because I think that's generally the trend. Yeah. Okay. So that's what's going to naturally happen anyway. I get, it. I get yeah. it. But in principle, you agree that you're a hypocrite if you're a dog lover and consume other animals that are just like dogs, yeah, but yeah, just look different. True. Yeah, that's, that's true. true. Yeah. So you agree with the premise here of this discussion? Yeah. Kind of, but when yeah. you say all animals are inherently the same, they are similar, but I wouldn't say inherently the same. But okay, for the, let me extend that. Inherently the same in the ways that matter, like uh, sentience, conscious, yeah. you know, desire, freedom, and they don't want to be hurt, and, you know, otherwise yeah. they're not an animal, they're a carrot. Carrot, oh. Yeah. Yes, that's one way of saying it, but well, yeah. 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 Um, so if you're not a vegan, you're abusing animals through your lifestyle. There's no way around that. They're, they're being a use for their flesh they're having their flesh torn off their body which is abuse they're being tortured most of the time in farms and then they're being murdered in slaughterhouses this is animal abuse so my position is that you're not only a hypocrite but you're an animal abuser if you're not vegan so would you say that anyone that just eats meat is an animal abuser by their actions 100 percent they are there's no there's no escaping that you're paying someone to stab animals to death when you purchase meat or consume meat you're you're propagating this supply chain of animal abuse so you're you're culpable for that yeah but uh, i just eat meat just because it's um partially based on culture tradition and okay. dietary stuff like that yeah but i get it i would never ask you to reduce something that is an injustice like stabbing innocent animals to death i would never tell you to do that I would tell you you have to be vegan. Just like I would never tell you to reduce racism or reduce domestic violence or reduce the, the times that you rape a child, I would say stop doing it completely, it's an injustice. In the same way, I would tell you to stop abusing animals. So I would never tell you to reduce. And culture and tradition has never justified anything that's immoral. I mean, we could look at what's cultural, 
racism is cultural in some place and it has been cultural. Uh, slavery has been traditional, human slavery. We would never use those things as a justification to continue to do something that's inherently evil, would we? Yeah. Yeah. So and this, this is a, a rights violation and a justice issue, you know what I mean? Yeah, but I kind of do feel like, um, in a way, like, there was kind of a cycle of life. I, cycle of life. The circle of life? Yeah, some, yeah. Do you know where the circle of life come from, that phrase? Um, I think it was the Lion King, but there's okay. probably something before it, I'm no, no, sure. No, 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 it came from the Lion King, so you're actually using the Lion King as a scientific source here. <laughs> is there Nowhere in biology before? it talks about the circle of life. Uh, is there nothing before it? It's a song by Elton John in a Disney movie. But is there anything before it? No. There's, there's maybe the food chain, the food but chain, there's no that's circle that's of life. That's a song chain. by Elton John. See, this is how you're programmed. You've been programmed by the TV. Oh, yes. No, that's okay. So was I. I thought the circle... I only just recently learned as an activist that the circle of life came from a Disney movie called The Lion King. Hmm. See how they trick you into thinking that you're a lion? Well, I'm not a lion. No, no but, but they trick people. People actually come up to me and go, what about a lion? They think that they're Simba from The Lion King. Okay. But we, we can eat plants. We're obviously herbivores in our biology and we have no predatory instinct whatsoever. Like oh, when we see... Well... well what do you mean by herbivores in biology? Like, we, we don't have any um, carnivorous traits. Like, we don't have claws, we're not streamlined, we, we have sweat for... teeth, so... We have blunt thing. teeth. Well, we evolved from... I think it was um, National Geographic or something I must have seen on TV, but... I think it was the fact that um, we started cooking meat, that our, feet, that our teeth began... No, we started cooking food. Cooking food, that our teeth... Not just meat. We started cooking our calories so we could get process more carbohi carbohydrates. Our brain runs on glucose, not on meat. Yes, but our teeth did like kind of evolve to eat meat. Show me. These are blunt and flat. Okay. okay. Have you seen a carnivores or an omnivore's teeth? Well, they're much sharper. These. You know what I mean. Yeah. Th these are yeah, these are very. Th these could be eating tubers, uh, things from the ground, root vegetables and apples and you know hard fruits. We need some sharpness, but we don't rip and swallow like a carnivore does. No, but we have kind of evolved to eat meat, but... No, no we haven't, because don't, you don't have no biological adaptations to chase down prey. Well, that doesn't mean we haven't still evolved to like, eat a certain type of food. Just because you can eat meat doesn't mean that we're designed to eat it. Like, I can eat shit too. Yes. Like, I can clean some shit, and I can eat that shit. Uh, you know, that might have been my only food source in a survival situation, just like rotting carcasses were. Yeah. You know, we're opportunistic eaters. We eat what we have to to survive. Yeah? Yeah. So when survival isn't a justification, what then? Well, you can walk in a supermarket and buy whatever you want. You don't have to murder an animal to rip the flesh off their bones to eat, do you? I guess they don't want... Well, yeah. it's a choice, small wolf. Yeah. So you're choosing to be cruel to animals when you do that. And I'm saying that dog lovers who do that are hypocritical animal abusers. I guess if you point it to the animals, but not to dogs. Because people see animals, I'd say people definitely see animals as different. Yeah, because they're, they're supremacist in their mindset towards animals. We think that we are the supreme animal. Okay, so anyone below us, we treat like, well, however we want. We decide who lives, who dies, who we treat kindly, like dogs. And sometimes we don't. Sometimes we kill dogs. We euthanize them here in Australia if they, no one, they don't find a home. It's a human supremacist attitude, the, the, the same attitude that we use to enslave and kill each other. We use that for animals. Yeah, that's true. Because yeah. you look at animals so far below us, like who gives a shit about a chicken? I do. I do. A chicken wants to live. They're yeah. sentient. But you probably have been programmed not to. I mean, it's like, well, everyone sees value differently. In every, even in people, you'd see value differently. Of course, but we'd never deny the rights of no. someone who we deem we don't like, or they're not as smart as me, or... They're, they're a different colour or they're from a different oh. culture you know people yeah. used to think that about and racism still exists yeah. you know Oops. you know and it's evil that mentality we have to you know so I'm saying that the same mentality you have towards animals is also evil you might not see that yet but it is because it justifies something that's abusive and cruel uh. do you have anything to <laughs> do you have anything to say oh no this is like uh, a truth bomb time. city it's uh. the first time you thought this through like that I'd say my mind is pretty ingrained, so, but you do make very good points, but yeah. I think like we all have like different moral standpoints and in my opinion, like we just need to, um, maybe it's the um, incentive or like to eat meat or 
Uh, yeah, but yeah, like I said before, in my opinion, everyone in the future, meat consumption will probably decrease significantly. Yeah. Most of us will be um, probably vegetarians or vegans, yeah. in my opinion. Uh, yeah. so. Well, I'm a vegan. You know, I'm a vegan, yeah. obviously. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. for for the, all the logical reasons I discussed, and for the ethical reasons I discussed, and. I think that no evil lasts forever. People are going to wake up to it. People like you, smart people with a heart, are going to wake up sooner or later. That no, no injustice can last for, forever, especially with the freedom of information that we can spread across online. And I've got a bunch of graphic footage here for across, from across Australian farms and abattoirs. You probably don't need to see this. You, I mean, I don't think you have some illusion about what happens in a slaughterhouse, no, no, do you? No, it's pretty terrifying. Yeah, yeah. No. You wouldn't want to be in a slaughterhouse. No. If someone said, oh, well, he tastes good or culture or tradition, you'd think, no, that's bad, I don't want to be there. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. So these animals don't want to be there either, and we're breeding them for this specific purpose to murder them. Yeah. But thank you so much for the discussion, mate. It's and, uh, already up. Uh, sorry, do you want to continue? We can yeah, continue. Why not? Okay, well, right. is there anything that you can raise to me that would justify doing this to animals? Uh, I'd say the only real... Yeah, I see the only real reason could be either um, you have to eat it as part of a diet or culture or tradition, which might be like, and you did disagree with it, but in my opinion, there are some cultures and traditions that people should be allowed to keep. Of course, unless those cultures and traditions violate someone's rights, then they can f off. <laughs> yeah, but you know I think I mean? like, yeah, because um, in the future, like when everyone's more vegetarian or vegan, in my opinion, like some people should like, I'd say like the um, Inuits, uh, Native American tribes, Aboriginals, they should still be allowed to do. Because their thing's more of, how would I say, it's not like, they're more of just eating just enough to feed themselves. And like, in my opinion, it's like an over commercialization of eating meat. That's not the problem for me. Um, but, so you cannot use culture and tradition unless you use all of culture and tradition. You can't just say, oh, culture justifies something evil and also we should keep it because there's good things in culture. I'm not saying all culture is bad. I'm saying you can't use culture to justify one specific thing <laughs> because it's a, it's a logical fallacy. You know what I mean? It's like appealing to nature and saying, well, nature justifies eating meat because animals do it in nature. Well, then there's evil things that happen in nature. Good and bad happens in culture too, doesn't it? Well... When you say good and bad in nature, I think like, what, what do you mean by that? Good, good and bad happens in nature. Well, animals rape and kill each other, or that they. I, they, they... I think animals are more animal than good and evil, in my yeah, opinion. But, but, but more, I, I, not yeah. from the, the oh, agent's oh, perspective, yeah, from yeah, our yeah, perspective. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, like yeah, I get from what our you perspective, mean. walking up yeah. and ripping someone up with a zebra striped T-shirt on, <laughs> as a zebra, like. You know, we wouldn't do that in civilized society. So when yeah. we look to nature and we go, oh, lions do this, yeah. I can do this, it's a logical fallacy, okay? And in the same way, when you go culture or tradition, we've done this, therefore we can continue doing this, it doesn't make sense. It's, it's not a moral argument, you know, because slavery was cultural, uh, female genital mutilation is cultural, um, as racism has been traditional, like we wouldn't continue to those practices because they're either cultural or, or traditional is what so I'm saying. Like, how would you feel about just like um, native tribes just yeah. fishing in? Yeah. If I was talking to a native tribes person, I would say they would have, and they, they had nothing to eat out there, I would say they'd have more of a justification than you. Yeah, okay? of course, yeah, yeah. definitely. Easy. So, so you have no justification, yeah? Let's just get that off the table. You don't have any justification. Uh, like you personally, then we can talk about the tribes people. Uh, uh, so, you do you have any justification yourself? And we can talk about tribes people after I you. I wouldn't say I do. You wouldn't say you have any justification to eat animals, animal products that abuse and kill them? I'll just say no. Okay. Yeah, uh, that's safe because I've never heard one. Not one that justifies what we do to them for it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. So for tribes people, they have one thing you don't have. Yeah. They're so trying think, to survive. That's why I think they yeah. should be allowed to, but obviously... Well, in a, if you... Well, I don't know if they should be... It's hard for me to say... Like, look, if you, if you and me and you were stuck in a jungle, right? And I, we were both dying. Yeah. And you were starting to get desperate. And you started looking at me going, F if I um, speared him and ate him, I would survive. You know? You have more of a reason to do that because you're about to die and you're not, you know. So these tribes have learned to survive and do what they can and eat what they can, yeah. yeah? But let's just say the world progressively goes, moves towards veganism, yeah. yeah? And we start looking at animals 
as individuals, you know. Once the Western world and China and all that start abolishing these slaughterhouses, I know it's, a, it's quite a utopian idea right now, then we can start thinking about tribes people too. Yeah. Maybe we can start bringing enough food to them, you know, enough plant agriculture for them and, and things like that. Yeah. But right now, why would I talk about these Inuits and people that are in survival situations when I want to talk to all these people that literally have no reason or justification to abuse animals through their I'd say, lifestyle? I'd say no justification, but I think reason's a bit different. But yeah, 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 yeah. definitely no justification in yeah. my opinion. Yeah, so the reasons don't justify it. Yeah, reasons yeah. are more like, I think reasons are much more personal and justifications yeah. would be more like ethical and more. Yeah, I agree. I, I agree with you there, for sure. Yeah, for reasons are, that taste good. I, I don't know about the industry. I think I need these nutrients out of this meat when it's the load, you know, which obviously the science is not on that side. You can get nutrients from plants, all nine essential amino acids and everything except for B12, which is added to all the food anyway and is injected into the animals anyway, which you can get a supplement for very easily. So that's really off the table. Um, but we can finish this now with, with saying that you don't have a justification for abusing these animals. So would you say that you're going to stop? Uh, probably not. I'll yeah. probably eat less meat in the future, but yeah. I'm more following the trend. Of yeah. so you're following what's popular and what other people are doing instead of uh, having your own moral compass that you li live by. I suppose you could say that. That is a... Yeah, that's pretty accurate. Okay. I wish you had a bit more c courage and confidence to go your own way and stop abusing these animals, but you agreed that... I wouldn't call it courage and confidence. I mean... What would you call it? Lazy or...? No, not, no, not that. I'd just say... Um, what would you call it? I don't know. Courage and confidence don't sound right to me, though. When because you... you're appealing to popularity. You're following the crowd. You said trends. Who cares what everyone else is doing? If you've got moral, your own moral framework, if you think you're an animal abusing hypocrite for eating meat and other animals, you know, you agree they're sentient and don't want to die and they're, they're, they suffer, then you're basically breaking your own moral framework to go with the trend. Well, moral framework. Look, well, you said that you're abusing animals. Are you against animals? Well, let's find out if you're against abusing animals. I think. If you can abuse in the like... Think about the word. Mm. Yeah, I suppose you're right. We're treating them as property. We're shooting them in the head, cutting their heads off and ripping the flesh off of their bones and selling their flesh and eating it. That's not abusing someone? Yeah, it is. Yeah. That's the worst way we abuse anyone in this uh, Western society. That is the worst way, unless you're talking about murder, but it's still not systematic legal uh, breeding and slavery and then murder. Like it's, it was, This is all legal too. The, 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 the legal system hasn't even caught up yet. Yeah. I think there was a um, case in... Um it was either Australia or New Zealand about um, overshearing of sheep. Yeah. Yeah. And so, I'm not sure, I think it was, I don't know when, the case was recent, but I don't know if it's been picked up on anymore, yeah. but yeah, yeah, that was um, one case. That the, um, and there was like, not enough legal action back then. Yeah. So, that's definitely something that needs to be looked at. Yeah. The law takes a long time to catch up to what's moral. Look at the abolishment of uh, slavery in uh, America, it's like 400 years or something ridiculous. Why didn't they abolish that straight away? That shouldn't have ever even happened. That just gives you an idea of how long people take to connect to these, these simple moral concepts like don't enslave and kill others who are sentient, you know? Yeah. yeah. So you're against animal abuse, would you say? Uh, by your definition, no. You're not, so you're, not, you're, you're, you're for abusing animals? By, In your yes, actions? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, well, at least you'll leave the table today knowing that you're an animal abusing hypocrite, and that's all I had well, to do. I already knew that, so. Yeah, you already, you already knew that, but not to this I extent. I feel like, kind of like, I feel like, I feel like kind of everyone knows already. But it's kind more, of, kind of, that's why they don't like me pointing it out. Yeah, they, they, they won't say they do, but they know they do. That's the thing. Yeah. That's the thing. Do, do you think I knew that when I was doing it? I don't know. I 100% did, that's why I changed. I, I hated being a hypocrite, I hated being an animal abuser. I hated it. That's why I, I couldn't deal with it. So, um, I don't know if point, um, uh, this isn't really like, this wouldn't really be a proper point, but how do you think animals would go after we like stop eating them? Do you think we should, we should just, um... Yeah, so it slowly, fl slowly phase out because it's a su supply and demand situation and farmers wouldn't breed as many animals, they'd yeah, slowly yeah. phase out the industry. The will eventually disappear. Yeah, but yeah. it would be very I gradual. Very gradual. Yeah. I think, 
the moment that we hit a population point, though, people are going to realize we have to stop eating animals because we have to grow food. It's much more efficient. It's yeah, efficient, um, healthier, I guess, as well. Would you, yeah. yeah. It's efficient and healthier. I would never use that to... to persuade someone I want people to do this for the right reasons because we're robbing the lives of these animals we're causing suffering and torture and death yeah, you know all, yeah that's true as well but. Yeah. and I know there's these extraneous things like health and the environment that that these are very big bolstering arguments for what I'm saying but at the core of this the reason the environment's going to shit is because we're exploiting and enslaving and feeding all our resources to these animal slaves and murdering them yeah, that's the core like, of it and there's the problem with I'm grazing as well over grazing that just destroys the yeah, yeah, so yeah. And that's that's like we should be much more focusing on like growing wheat. Um, we, grow, we grow enough food, by the way. We feeding it. We feeding it all to well, animals. Yeah. Well, that's not enough. Then. Well, there's 70 billion land animals on Earth right now. We're ten. Uh, what's it? Seven billion humans. So they outnumber us ten to one. The land animals we're eating. Yeah, but yeah, in my opinion, we need to grow more um, fruit, vegetables, stuff like that. Um, reduce meat consumption, but for different. Um, well, we have different reasons, but yeah, like yeah. yeah. But, um, so, um, I don't know what I was going to say earlier, but uh, what do you think will happen to the animals after we stop eating them? Do you think that we have to, like, uh, control them in a way to, like, that they don't... Because um, one very big problem that we've done is the cow. Yeah, well, they, they, these animals don't exist in nature. We've selectively bred them and turned them into milk machines was, and meat um, machines. And I think 300 years ago, was it? Or I'm not, I'm not sure. Um, do you know how long it was that... Um, Cows started existing, because there were wild cows before we started to. Yeah, they were the um, watches. Oh, I think I'm saying it right. Am I? I'm not really sure of the origins of the wild cows and yeah. which ones they used to selectively breed, but it started somewhere, and they started herding yeah. these animals. And yeah, they started getting like the um, the smaller ones, and yeah, the bigger ones and breed and putting a bull in the pen and breeding different species together. And yeah. so they tried to make them like smaller and weaker. Yeah, and so like that's like that we have so what do you propose we should do about that like after they so. what I think is we should stop mass breeding these animals and using them for our own benefit and if these species die out then I'm happy with that because why would they want to be born into slavery and uh, then no, but like after after we're done yeah. with all the um, after after everyone turns vegetarian yeah so vegan, yeah. vegan not veg oh. vegetarian still consume eggs and dairy and those animals oh, all get oh, killed um, Vegetarians don't consume eggs. They consume dairy, but not eggs. Uh, no, a uh, lacto-over vegetarian will consume eggs and dairy. Oh, okay. oh yeah, I yeah. mean the general vegetarian. Yeah. 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 They don't eat eggs though. I think they they still eat milk and cheese though. I think. Yeah, and all those cows are really badly fucked up. Horrible. Dairy industry is the most one of the most cruel and abusive industries on earth. Disgusting what they do to animals. Yeah. So um. So like after everything, like let's say, what, what, so what do you, what after do you, we all turn vegan, right? So yeah, yeah. That, we, we all turn vegan. That, uh, that'll this happen eventually, in my opinion. Like, okay. Because then, then what? There will be no animals being bred. Yeah. So um, so do you propose we send them back to nature? Like no, no, uh, no, 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 no. They don't exist in nature. These animals, they wouldn't survive out in nature. Yeah, so so we protect them. Yeah. We protect the ones that are left in sanctuaries. That's it. And let them live out the rest of their lives, which is not long, ten to twenty-five years, and that's it. I guess that's true. Yeah. So that would have to phase this out. Yeah. They have to. They, they couldn't let 70 billion land animals live out their lives. We don't have that type of time, resources, water, food to feed 70 billion plus 70 billion, uh, 7 billion humans. 70 billion land animals plus 70 billion, uh, 7 billion humans. It's just, we're not leaving any room for population growth here. I feel like if we did focus on just growing food and vegetables, we would have enough to feed everyone, in my opinion. We're already growing enough to feed 77 billion sentient beings on Earth. Yeah. And cows eat more than we do. Yeah. They do. Yeah. They're growing fields of grass to harvest and turn into hay to feed to cows, grass fed. Yeah. It's crazy. I will let you go, mate. No, I was going to continue, but. No, 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 that's all right. We'll let someone else, because you already admitted that you're abusing animals and all of that. You admitted that the sign was correct in principle. You admitted you're not going to change, so we'll move on. Right. But. Really good talking to you. Thank you for the discussion. I'm Martin. Joey. 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 Yeah. I'll see you around, Joey. Take care.